Hello and welcome to today's myminimaths.co.uk video tutorial. And today we're going to be adding decimal numbers using the formal written method, also known as the vertical method or column method. So first of all, on to question one. Now to begin with, we're just going to refresh our memories on some whole numbers. So we have a four digit number, add another four digit number, so that's 5,999, I'm going to add that to 4,997. So first of all, our units column. So we have nine units, add seven units, which is 16 units. So we're going to place the six into the units column and then carry over into the tens column. So here we have the carried over 10 plus nine tens plus nine tens to give us a total of 19 tens or 190. So we place the nine into the tens column and then carry over into the hundreds column. And then on the hundreds column, we've got the carried over 100 plus 900 plus 900 for a total of 1900 or 1900. So we're going to place the nine into the hundreds column and then carry over into the thousands column. Now, again, we have the carried over thousand, five thousand, and four thousand for a total of ten thousand. So we have no single thousands. We then carry one into the ten thousands column. And as you can see, there's nothing here or here. So we just bring that 10,000 down to the final answer for a final answer of 10,996. And next we're on to question two. Now this is the first of our decimal numbers and it's exactly the same as adding whole numbers. We just happen to have a decimal point in between two of the digits. So let's write it out to begin with and we'll see how it works. So a 45.8 and we're going to add that to 16.5. Now the very first thing that we need to do is to make sure that our decimal points are all lined up. Once you have the decimal points lined up into one single column, all the other digits will fall into the correct columns in the correct place value, even if we have different number of digits in a, between, across the two different numbers. So that's the very first thing you must always make sure that you have. And once we have that, it's exactly the same as with the whole numbers. So first of all, we have the tenths column here. So we have eight tenths and five tenths, which is 13 tenths. So we place the three and then we carry one over into the units. And, that, and, and as we can clearly see, there's our 1.3 that we've just created. I'll just get rid of that again. So we can go back to the question. And next we have our units column. So we have the one that we carried over from the 1.3. We have the five units and the six units. That's a total of 12 units. So we place the two in the units column and carry one over into the tens column, like before. And then finally, we have 10 that we carried over, four tens, 40, and then the single 10 for a total of six tens or 60. For a final answer, of 62.3. And next we're on to question three, which is 23.78. I'm going to add that to 53.78 again. And don't forget, first thing we do is make sure that our decimal points are all lined up and then we can start adding just as we did on the previous questions. So first of all we have our hundredths column here. So that's eight hundredths add eight hundredths which are sixteen hundredths. So it's like saying eight P add eight P is sixteen P and we're going to carry into the tenths column here and then we have one tenth, seven tenths and seven tenths which is fifteen tenths. So there's our five and we're going to carry over into the units column. We have our decimal point already in position. Then we have one unit, three units and three units for a total of seven units. And then finally in the tens column, 
we have 20 plus 50 for uh, an answer of 70. So altogether, our final answer is 77.56. And our final question, question four, is 3.87. And we're going to add that to 18.6. Now, as you can see, big difference here is we've got some gaps. Now, some people like to fill in those gaps with zeros. Absolutely fine, don't have to, but that's uh, up to you. But what you will, will have noticed is on the previous two questions, I've really uh, em tried to emphasize the importance of lining up these decimal points. And what you've got to do is make sure you do that. Because once you've done that, everything else will fall into the correct position. So here we've got our hundredths column. So if I add these up now, we have seven hundredths and no hundredths, clearly seven hundredths. Then I'm onto my tenths column. That's eight tenths and six tenths, which are 14 tenths. So I place my four and carry over into the units. And then I'm going to add my carried over unit, three units and eight units for 12 units. So that's two units and carry over to the tens. And finally, we have one ten and one ten for a total of 20 for a final answer of 22.47. Two things to make a note of here. First of all, I'm sure you'll agree that decimals are actually no different than whole, whole, uh, whole numbers. You just need to make sure those decimal points are lined up. And also, also, secondly, if you do line up those decimal points, you can see that even if we have different types of decimal numbers with different numbers of digits, and as long as those, those decimal points are lined up, everything else will fall into place. Thank you very much for listening, and I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Take care.